English spelling is really hard to learn, because history. The examples that are usually used to demonstrate that are things like the O-U-G-H words, cough, through, dough, and so on. But there are other reasons too, and one of them involves this. It's a character so important to English that it has its own name, schwa. To explain it, let's start by talking about this letter. What does that sound like? In school we're taught the name of it, A, and sure, it can sound like that in words like later, but you're actually making two separate vowel sounds there, A. Later. Sometimes kids are taught this letter as just a, ah, and it can sound like that too in words like cash. But it can also be the or in call, and depending on your accent, and I've got to sound really posh to make this work, it can also be the r in bath. That's really at the back of the mouth, it sounds completely unnatural for me. Uh, but this letter can also sound like the a uh in about. And that sound, uh, is the one we're interested in here. Linguists have a chart, part of the International Phonetic Alphabet, to talk about vowel sounds. And it goes all the way from a vowel like e, which is produced with the highest bit of your tongue near the front of your mouth, tongue really close to the roof, to ah. Uh. Highest bit of the tongue at the back, not close to the roof. e -ah. If you study linguistics, uh, then your first few lessons of phonetics are basically just a group of people all making the same weird sounds and then trying to understand what the bits their mouth are actually doing. Uh, someone usually tries to poke around to feel where the tongue is and uh, then nearly makes themselves throw up. Anyway, um, sitting right in the middle of that chart is that uh from about, represented by the schwa. It is central, everything just kind of sitting in the middle. It's the vowel that requires the least effort. Uh is the vowel you use when you've got to make a sound, but you don't know what to say. Uh... So yes, schwa is the A in about, but it's also the E in petition, the last I in definite, the first O in potato, and the U in support. I said English spelling was a mess. No wonder that definite with an A is such a common misspelling. If you don't know that it has the same root as finite, it's fair to think that it's spelled that way. That schwa sound, definite, gives you very little information about what letters to use. So what's the difference between those two words? Well, in finite, there's stress on night, but in definite, we don't stress that syllable anymore, so it gets reduced, meaning that its vowel gets reduced to schwa, the least effort vowel sound. Every vowel letter in English, A, E, I, O, U, is capable of being reduced to schwa. Not always, but they're capable of it. Sometimes vowels like that are reduced so much that they disappear entirely, in words like these. Your dialect may be different, of course, and if you pronounce the words on their own, there may still be something there. But give me a story to read out about a separate chocolate camera, and there's no schwa in the middle of any of those. Vowels get reduced even further in quickly spoken, slurred sentences. So the formal way to pronounce this sentence would be, I'm going to go to the store. But in real life, in my accent, if I was just saying that to a friend as I was headed out the house, I'd reduce it to something like, I'm going to go to the store. Almost every vowel in there was schwa. I'm going to go to the store. There was a bit of stress on go, a bit of effort went in there, and store couldn't get reduced to st. But other than that, it was all schwa. I'm going to was reduced to umina. American speakers might reduce it differently to either I'ma or umma. That's not lazy. That's not wrong. That's just how language works. We all convert between those reduced vowels and fully spelled out words instinctively. Although it's something that people learning English aren't always taught. They often have to pick that up by themselves. And that's one of the reasons why occasionally, when you get these well-meaning spelling reformers who say, well, every word should just be spelled how it sounds, they haven't thought it through. There are loads of English words that have more than one pronunciation, not just because of accent, but because most of the time we reduce the vowels to schwa. Thanks to my co-authors Molly Rule and Gretchen McCulloch. Gretchen has a great podcast called Lingthusiasm. The link is in the description.